بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على كل أمور الدنيا والدين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا سيدنا سيد الأنبياء المرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نوجد عن ما تعني ذكر وتذكر النفع والانتفاع والفرا والاستفادة والحث على تمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله مرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع نطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن سرك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن سرك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن سرك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغني صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الحمد لله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم كل ما بدأ على دخلكه ورضى نفسه زنة عاشي مدادة كلماتي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We are on the 24th lesson So inshallah after the class I've prepared for you all Ijaza So basically this Ijaza It is on a hadith Whereby Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated this hadith on the day of Ashura it's a hadith on Ashura right? and the special thing about this ijaza right is that um is that every narrator in this in this senate right, so in this chain of transmission every narrator uh, would narrate this hadith to the next person on the day of Ashura uh, so it's, it's called musalsal right musalsal hadith of musalsal that means there was a particular thing about the hadith that was passed down uh, from generation to generation right? that was just there was more than the words uh, so not just the words that was passed down right? but some hadith you know the, the that action like for example Rasam took the hand of the sahabi right so the sahabi when he narrates the hadith he will take the hand of his student and the student when he did it take the hand of his student that kind of thing you know like there is there is a particular action or like a particular timing or like there's a particularity Right, about the hadith and this particularity will be passed down with every person who narrates the hadith to the next person. Right? So this is one of those types. Uh, it's called a musalsal hadith. Right? It's one of those types where there was a particularity about the hadith. Right? And the particularity of this hadith is that it was narrated specifically on the day of Ashura. Uh, so it's passed down. So every, narr every narrator will say, so and so narrated, narrated to me this hadith on the day of Ashura. And, then, and he says, so and so narrated to me the hadith on the day of Ashura. And so and so narrated the hadith to me on the day of Ashura. Right? So it, uh, it will be linked up right, to uh, uh, this was given to me by Sister Maria, Maria Yusuf. Right? So then she, so now I can pass it to you all. Uh, so then, so, 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 it happens with this day. Lah. Otherwise, for next year. Lah. <laughs> right? So that's how I was thinking it today. Because I was thinking today is holiday, it's a holiday. Right? Uh, and I was thinking, and there's like, there was. Uh, this construction going on upstairs, very noisy. So I was scared that I should cancel class or not. Now I was like, if I cancel class today, then I cannot give this to you. 
right? Wait until next year, <laughs> then I can transmit the hadis to you. I was thinking, no lah. Because it's very, it's very noisy, you know, ah? Huh? Yeah, it is very noisy upstairs, you know. But then, but then I was thinking, no lah, I don't answer because it's Ashura, and then otherwise, if you want to get the musalsal, it has to be given on the day of Ashura. <laughs> otherwise, you won't get the musalsal, right? So I have, I have three. But later on, I will read it out lah. Right, uh, after the class, uh, I will read, read the hadith after the class, right, and then I will ijazah for you all, right, to get the hadith. So if you can make it home in time, right, before the end of the day, and you can, you can, you can narrate it to your husband, uh, you can pass it to your husband, and also to put for children. When you pass, children, you put your name here and you put your date here, right. So the Maria put her her name here, right. So I will, I will put in my name. My name is not here. It's the Maria's name, right. So I she will have to put in my name. And then, uh, then it's your name if you're gonna give to your husband. To uh. so that point, like, even a person who transmits it. Yeah, name. yeah. Then my dad says everyone's names. So not really. It's everybody's names. And the thing that's beautiful is that our book that we're taking, Shah Bufada Bukhuda, his name is here. Mm. Right. So you see, Mardia, right? So Mardia binti Muhammad Yusuf, a Singaporean, right, from Singapore. Right. She got the hadith from Sheikh Abdul Aziz. Right, so he is uh, one of the sheikhs in Syria. So she heard it from him when she was in Syria. He heard it directly from Sheikh Abu Fadda Abu Ghudda. Right, Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda. Right, this is the, the, the sheikh who wrote this book. Uh, so he is third in line. Right, so she heard it from uh, Sheikh Abdul Iz, right, uh, Abu Abu Iz, and then he heard it from Sheikh Abu Fattah Abu Ghudda, who is his muhaddith. Right, and then you have every person in line until Sayyidina Abu Qatada. Right, and then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and then the hadith is here. Uh, this is the hadith that is mentioned, right? And then say, I, and I got this, I got this through a way of uh, whereby every person in the chain heard this on the day of Ashura, uh, and I also heard it on the day of Ashura. So I got the hadith, right? Then uh, this is for you. Then your name will be here, lah. That's your name. And then you put a date, right? Ten Muharram. Right? So Ashura lah, ten Muharram is for you. Right? So inshallah. <laughs> so construction, construction lah. <laughs> it's so noisy the construction. <laughs> so later on, I will, I will recite, I will recite the hadith to you all, and then I will pass the sanad. Right? You can just uh, get it. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So I mean like, and and <laughs> you get what I mean, right? You get what I mean. It's really, really oh, noisy. Today, yeah, it's just today. So to the point that I cancelled the second kiss, I cancelled the second kiss class. I had a kiss class, 10 to 11. But was, I had only like one thereafter, but it's so noisy that I said, you know what, I'm going to class. <laughs> right, so I stopped the class at 11 o'clock. <laughs> because it was, I said, I had to shout. As a boy, it's children. You, even more, I have to like, you know, try to tell them the stories. <laughs> yeah, it was so, and then it stopped. And then it stopped. <laughs> Yeah, it's upstairs. Okay, so alhamdulillah. So I didn't want to cancel. I was thinking to cancel because I know Aida not coming, Sarah not coming, a few of them not coming. So, so I thought I was to cancel or not. But I was thinking, Kalata, I cannot pass this to you. And I don't even know whether I will leave next year. And I'm like, you never know, you know. So like, if it's here, it's here, do it now. <laughs> right, at least you can pass to your family on today also if you want, you know. And go back to tell your husband, they got this. <laughs> rezeki lah, rezeki lah, but inshallah. I mean, uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of uh, secrets and uh, light when it comes to uh, Sanat. I mean, these kind of things. Like, 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 like uh, Sada Maria, her one, hers is, uh, she, she laminated. Uh, she, they will keep it and they will laminate it. Uh, so just to, I mean, it's, 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 it's nur lah. You know, it's light. It's light that you get. Like from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alright, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Repeating a statement three times for emphasis. is one of the habits of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's something that we should be doing it. Right, so it, and you will find a lot of scholars they will repeat something three times, sometimes in different ways of phrasing, right, but they will repeat, right, and that is one of the strongest ways of teaching to keep repeating statements. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to repeat his words in order to emphasize the subject matter and to draw attention to its importance, so that the listener could understand and comprehend it fully. Imam Bukhari rahimahullah taala also had a chapter entitled "One Who Repeats His Speech Three Times So That It May Be Understood." Right, so that is on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, Hafiz bin Hajar, rahimahullah taala, quotes Ibn uh, Al Munayyir, rahimahullah taala, who said, by including this chapter, Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah taala, refutes those who dislike statements to be repeated. Those who reprimand a student for asking that something be repeated, 
and those who consider such a request to be a sign of stupidity. Like he adds, in truth, the rule differs under different circumstances. If a student is unable to understand something the first time, there is nothing wrong in asking for it to be repeated, and there is no excuse for the teacher not to repeat it. In fact, to repeat it becomes more incumbent, uh, uh, more incumbent upon him right, than the first time he explained because by commencing an explanation, one becomes obli- obligated to repeat it if it's not understood. Right, so, 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 you know, this is the, 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 this is the way of Rasulullah so to repeat uh, his statements. First and foremost, so that people will understand it. Secondly, for it to be emphasized. And thirdly, for it to be memorized. Right, so that is why these are the three main reasons why he repeats statements. And for it to be understood completely, right, for it to be emphasized, right, because it could be understood, but he will repeat it to emphasize it, right, and also for them to be able to memorize exactly as it was said. Right, so the statement exactly as it was uh, uh, narrated by Rasulullah wasallam to be memorized. Right, that's why the Sahaba, right, they could they could narrate hadith, you know, verbatim, right, you know, word for word, they could mem- narrate hadith. Right, because it was repeated onto them and they, and they would memorize it. Right, however, there are there are instances whereby, uh, you know, uh, teachers they do not uh, repeat, right. But in a sense, they don't repeat in a way of like they would like uh, trying to uh, stop information from from coming to you, right. But more of if they see that the student was not paying attention. Uh, so because they were not paying attention, they asked you to repeat. Right, the, the teacher will still give the information. Right, but uh, in in a this is a different me- a method of teaching. Right, but through another means. Right, just to in a sense also to teach a lesson to the student. Right, for not paying attention. <laughs> right, so that one is also so a student can't say, oh, you know what, also some used to repeat something three times. So so in a sense, if they if, they, if she did that, she does that. If a student does that, but on the account that she does not understand by her own fault. I mean, it's her own mistake. So if someone does not understand because they really don't understand, right? you know, it's really that the, the, the statement was complicated, right? or the words were used were difficult, then that's okay. And the student can ask the teacher to repeat. Right? But if a student was uh, was negligent, uh, it was it was negligence on the part of the student, right? Uh, uh, then the teacher can actually uh, uh, use another way. Right for the student to be to get the uh, answer right from the teacher right or or maybe for for me personally I will just tell the answer but then I will to go <laughs> I I will reprimand like, I will just say that you were not paying attention right uh, but I will still give the answer lah you know but then I will you know if you are not paying attention and sometimes some some students they ask the same question the same lesson <laughs> right so if the, if if that happens right the same you know, they ask me a question I, I give the answer right a few moments down the the lesson they ask the same question again. Right, then I'll just I'll, I'll repeat the question again. What did I say? <laughs> right. That means if I know that the answer is in their notes, right, then I'll make them uh, look through your notes again. Right. But the other one is more on the part of a teacher to teach the student to be more hardworking. Uh, so don't be so in a sense when Rasam when Rasam are repeated, we mentioned for three reasons. Right, for it to be understood better, right, for it to be emphasized and for it to be memorized. Right. So but it's not for it's not it's not for it to like, you know, the student is lazy. Uh, in in revising herself, right? she just comes to the teacher and makes the teacher repeat everything over over again. Uh, no, right? So that that's not that's not. Uh, so you can't say, oh, it's a sunnah for the teacher to to repeat. No, right? Is is the student is on her part, right, to actually do her own homework first and her own revision first right, before you actually come to the teacher, right? So a lot of us, you know, whenever we have issues with teachers or issues with what what was taught, right, we will actually do our own research first. Uh, we would actually read through our notes first, read through the books first, read through the footnotes first, first by ourselves, right? And then if there are things that you still don't understand about it, then you go to your teacher, right? And then you ask your teacher, right? you know, uh, what does this mean? So basically, it is the adapt on the student's part, right? To actually uh, uh, learn up things, right? Or revise things before you actually come to the teacher. Right? So for me, as a teacher, I will, also, I will always uh, reprimand if I know it's in the notes. Right? It's somewhere in there, you're not looking at it. Right? Or it's clear in there. Right? But that is also part of a, a way of teaching. Eh? One of the ways of teaching. All right. So here, uh, Masayana Muhammad. Right? So Hadith 105. Right? So you understand eh? what, what, what is the per point of repeating these things. It's not to make the student lazy, but it's more for emphasis, for memorization, for understanding. Right, uh, that's why Rasulullah he would repeat uh, things. So 105, Rawal al Bukhari and Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anil Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anahu kana idha takallama bi kalimatin 
a'adaha salasan hatta tufhama anhu right so bukhari narrates on the authority of the anar radhiallahu anhu that who said that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say anything he used to repeat it three times so that it could be understood and this of the sunnah of the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, and sometimes he would repeat it in a way whereby uh, uh, he would like swear by Allah subhanahu wa taala. Right, he would uh, Muhammad, uh, he would uh, sometimes rephrase things right, for people to uh, understand it better. Right, Hanna and six Rawal Bukhari and Abdullah ibn Amr and Abdullah ibn Amrin radiyallahu taala anhu taala anhu. أنه رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال تخلف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في سفر سافرناه فأدرك فأدركنا وقد أرهقتنا الصلاة صلاة العصر ونحن نتوضأ فجعلنا نمسح على أرجلنا فنادى بأعلى صوته ويل للعقاب من النار مرتين أو ثلاثا. أي بخاري نريد أن أثارت سيدنا عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما. أي هو said that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم lagged behind us on a journey which we undertook. He then caught up with us when there was very little time for us to offer the asr prayer. When we performing wudu because in a hurry we began wiping our feet. Right, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم shouted right in a loud voice, destruction to the heels from the fire. And he said it two or three times. Okay, what does this mean? Right, so basically, what they were doing is that they were uh, doing their they, they were on a travel, right? And they were doing their wudu not properly, right? So they were washing their feet. It is not hoof, eh? it is feet. Eh? Right, so it's, it's, it's proper uh, wudu, right? So they were not washing their they were not washing their feet up to the ankles, and in fact, they were not even washing their feet. They were wiping water on the feet. And that is not uh, valid. That's so why the ulama get the ruling that for wudu you have to wash and not to wipe. The only part of wudu that you wipe is your head. Right, the rest of your body has to be washed. Right, water must flow right down these uh, uh, limbs. Right, so when they were wiping their feet with water out of rushing through their wudu to be able to pray the asr prayer, right, also some he 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 uh, said at the top of his voice, bi ala sautihi, at the top of his voice he said, wailun lil aqabi min al nar. You know, beware, beware of your uh, heels, right? The aqab are the heels, right? Beware of the heels from the fire. And right? that means you're not doing it well. Right? You're not doing your wudu well, and it could be that if you don't do your wudu well, right, then these heels will be in the fire. Right? Because you're not doing their acts of, of, of worship well. In saying this, Rasulullah, and he said it three times, right? To, because it's something severe. Right, so so in that's how you warn somebody. You will say one. You will say one time when you want to warn people of something dangerous. Uh, you will say two times, three times, four times, five times, right, to make them stop doing what they're doing or to pay attention to what they are, uh, what they are doing. Right, so in saying this, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam issued a warning to those who do not wash their feet thoroughly when performing wudu. Among the lessons we learn from this hadith is that an ignorant person should be taught. The voice may be raised when rebuking someone. And a matter may be repeated so that it's thoroughly so that it's thoroughly understood, right? So so these are he put three lessons here. Yes, yes, she Abdul Fatah, uh, Abdul Fatah uh, Abu Ghuda, right? He put three lessons, right? That first and foremost, right? Uh, to show the severity of the situation, you can raise your voice, right? To just so they will never forget this, right? Never forget because it's something maybe people might do, right? Be very lax when it comes to washing your feet when you when you take wudu. I mean, it's actually common. Eh? If you look uh, sometimes at the masjid, sometimes I will see the way people wash their feet. They don't, especially youngsters, they don't uh, wash it wash it well. Right? They just on the tap, they put their feet underneath and they bring it out. Right? So you never know whether it hit the ankle and then at the bottom of the feet, the water reach or you know like it just you can, you've seen it before. They do it very quickly, right? So you know this kind of things is uh, it will cause the wudu not to be valid, right? And then uh, then the prayer is not valid. Right? So sometimes he raises his voice to bring attention. Don't do that. I don't ever do that. Right? If you want, you know, if you're doing your wudu, do it well. Right? So he raised his voice. So he raised the voice in this situation. Right? And we know that we know that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would never raise his voice unless unless the situation has to do with Allah subhanahu wa taala and the rights of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So if someone were to read his hadith and say that, hey, how come he raised his voice? I thought he Rasulullah never raised his voice. He does not raise his voice for himself. Uh, but he will raise his voice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you will find him raising his voice. Right? Because it is he's a teacher. 
and and this can be wrong and right? the sahaba cannot get this wrong because it's going to pass down to the next generation so that's why every generation the teachers must must teach well because otherwise the wrong information will go down to the next generation and then ibada all you know hancho la you see and it will all uh, collapse all right so and it is repeated so that it's thoroughly understood right and also emphasized right, how important the situation is okay the next hadith I mm. yeah, I saw this video about uh, people spraying water and then just, you know, take it as a kiblat. Can, can they just spray it? Okay, if they want to spray water, right, uh, they, the, it has to be washing, right? So what they have to do is, right, there are two ways of doing it. Right, the first way is they take the water spray, they spray into their palm until there's a pool. Uh, so that is the same as, 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 as pouring. Right, so you spray. I think my open right. <laughs> I mean, you spray in, you know. So you basically, you spray, so it comes the pool. Right, a pool in your hand. Right, then you take your wudu. Right, that's called washing. Okay, if you're not good at doing that, and you don't know how to do this kind of things. Right, so if you want to spray on your face directly, on your arms directly, then you must spray enough for the water to trickle down. It has to be trickling. Uh, trickling means washing. Uh, so they can't, uh, the water has to, the, the, the droplets have to be big enough to trickle. Uh, it has to flow. Uh, yeah, the face. So, 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 the whole, okay. is it? So, so, so you, it's really, it's really, it has to be trickling now, lah. There has to be a flow, a water flow. So, they spray, spray their arm, also they have to spray, 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 until the water is really flowing, right, down the arm. Then it's counted as washing. Uh, if they just spray one time and it's like droplets, it's not flowing. Uh, it's not counted. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's why when, when, when all these like, ustas, ustas who bring people for Umrah and Hajj, right, they teach us the spray water, right? They must mention to them, you must spray enough for the water to be, to, to, to they say, mengali. It has to flow. Uh, then it's... Cannot. <laughs> but that's why the, the ustas must explain. <laughs> they so know. I cannot spray my arm and then, then like... Uh, you spray, spray enough for the... So you see, if you, if you hold your arm that way, you spray, the water must be able to flow, you know? Uh, that means that the droplets are big enough for it to fall. That means it won't stay when you put your arm like that. So some spray you spray one time, it will stay. It won't flow. It's not counted. You must keep spraying until the waters, the, the droplets uh, gather. And that they're big enough. Yeah, as long as... as because even if you do your normal wudu, also you have, you have a black bit of pool here, right? And you wash, it's minimal. Right? The flow is already minimal. I like that. I like that. Because so, 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 he will do it. Right? He, will, he, will, he will fill up his palm with water and then he will do a, and but there is a flow there is still a flow uh, okay but I'm th- wondering if the spring like that cannot right I spray I don't know how much is there then I'm fine then I let the water flow by my hand flowing you know right that's not possible right? as long as it is enough water it's can it has to be enough water to be count, counted as, as as you're not it's not just like like dampening it you're not dampening it uh, you're, you're washing it it's washing uh, it's okay no problem. All right, alhamdulillah. Right, so, it, uh, so this, but, but, but what they were doing was they were just wiping their legs with water. <laughs> they had their feet with water, and that was not, uh, that was not valid. Right. Then what his book is that the, the sheikh is pulling out teaching methods, <laughs> but the hadith has fiqh inside, there's akida inside, there's you know like other things inside. Right, but you know, as we know that uh, when it comes to fiqh, right, you have to have like a lot of other tools. Right, to, to know it. But did, did he, what he wants is that he wants to focus on the teaching method uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Hadith 107, right? Uh, this, is, this is the footnote here. This footnote is coming from where? Right, Hafiz bin Hadi rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned that this refers to a doubt from the narrator. Or oh, when he says two or three times. The narrator was not sure if he said two or three times. Right, it shows that it's not essential to repeat statement three times. Rather, the object is to make the listener understand if this is achieved a few number of times, it will suffice. Right? So if in two times, like people already understand, then you can, keep, keep, you can stop there. Right? But of course, you can do it three times also. Right? Sometimes you do it more than three times, you do it a few times, right? for them to be able to really understand. In, so Hadith 107, Rawal Imam, uh, Rawal Imam Ahmadu uh, fi musnadihi an Abdul Rahmani, uh, an Abdul Rahmani bi inni uh, ghanmi, عن معاذ بن جبل رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خرج بالناس قبل 
غزوة تابوك فلما أن أصبح صلى بالناس صلاة الصبح ثم إن الناس ركبوا فلما أن طلعت الشمس نعس الناس على أثر الدلجة ولازم معاذ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يتلو أثره ثم إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كشف عنه قناعه فالتفت فإذا ليس من الجيش رجل أدنى إليه من معاذ فناداه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا معاذ قال لبيك يا, يا نبي الله قال قال أدنو أدنو دونك فدنا منه حتى لسقت راحلة راحلة تاخما إحداهما بالأخرى فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما كنت أحسب الناس من كما كما كانهم من البعد فقال معاذ يا نبي الله نعس الناس فتفرقت بهم ركابهم ترتع وتسير فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنا كنت ناعسا فلما رأى معاذ بشرى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إليه وخلوته له قال يا رسول الله إذن لي أسألك عن كلمة قد أمر قد قد أمرضتني وأسكمتني وأحزنتني فقال نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سلني عما شئت قال يا نبي الله حدثني حدثني بعمل يدخلني الجنة لا أسألك عن شيء غير لا أسألك عن شيء غيرها قال نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بخ 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 لقد سألت عن عظيم عن عظيم لقد سألت عن عظيم لقد سألت عن عظيم وإنه لا يسير إنه لا يسير على من أراد الله به الخير وإنه لا يسير على من أراد الله به خير وإنه لا يسير على من أراد الله به خير فلم يحدثه بشيء إلا قاله ثلاثا ثلاث مرات يعني أعاده ثلاث مرات حرسا لكي ما يتقنه فقال نبي, نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر وتقيم الصلاة وتعبد الله وحده لا تشرك به شيئا حتى تموت وأنت على ذلك فقال يا نبي الله أعدني فأعادها له ثلاث مرات ثم قال نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن شئت حد حدثتك يا معاذ برأس هذا الأمر وقوام هذا الأمر وذر وذر سنام فقال معاذ بلا بأبي وأمي أنت يا نبي الله حدثني فقال نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن رأس هذا الأمر أن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده, وحده لا شريك له وأن محمد عبده ورسوله وإن, وإن قوام هذا الأمر إقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وإن ذرعة السنام منه الجهاد في سبيل الله إنما أمرت أن, أقا... أن أقاتل الناس حتى يقيم الصلاة ويؤتوا الزكاة ويشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمد عبده ورسوله فإذا فعلوا ذلك فقد اعتصموا وعصموا دماءهم وأموالهم إلا بحقها وحسابهم على الله عز وجل Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala narrates in his musnad on the authority of Abdul Rahman bin Ghanam on the authority of Mu'az bin Jabbar Rilo Anhu that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi departed from the army of, for the battle, with the army from the battle of Tabuk. In the morning he led them in Fajr Salah in the, prayer, the morning prayer and the people began riding their animals when the sun rose they began dozing off 
because of their journeying in the early part of the night. Right? So they became becoming sleepy. Right? So Mu'az continued following directly behind Rasulullah SAW. Rasulullah SAW, and this only shows Sayyidina Mu'az uh, how he would really, uh, uh, he would really uh, stay very close to Rasulullah SAW. Right, how he would make it a point right, to, uh, to, to, to benefit as much as he can from the company and the physical closeness to Rasulullah eh? And that was the way of Sayyidina Mu'az. So Rasulullah SAW then opened his head veil, which he was wearing for the journey. You know, the head veil basically, there was like, a, like, a, like, a, like a, uh, the Arabs, they covered their faces, right? And they have their helmets on them when they go for, uh, when they go for journeys. Right, so and he looked back, he saw none of the entire army except Mu'az was closest to him because right, everybody was sleeping. <laughs> right, they were getting very sleepy, so they moved very slowly right, behind Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there was nobody with him except Sayyidina Mu'az. And Rasulullah then called him and said, Oh Mu'az! And he replied, Here I am, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, Come closer. Right, so he came closer, to, he came closer to him until the animals touched each other. And right, he was very close to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah said then, I did not know that the people were so far behind. <laughs> Where is everybody? Why is everybody so far behind? And Sayyidina Mu'az replied, Rasulullah, people were dozing off. Right, so their animals began dispersing and grazing and moving about. <laughs> they were all falling asleep. And so Rasulullah said, and I had also dozed off. And it was possible because when they're on their animals, they can actually sleep on their animals. And the animals just walk and they're actually sleeping on their animals. Right, so it, you know, it's possible for them, and then anyone just walk right, and they wander <laughs> around. <laughs> and when they wake up, they're like, hey, where's anybody? <laughs> right, it's something that in the past, like, it happened to people in the past, right? In our time, it doesn't really happen. Sometimes it happens when we are driving. Right? If you drive for a long period of time, you can actually fall asleep. Right? But it's very, it's very dangerous, <laughs> right? But not as dangerous as, you know, the animals is not dangerous because they just walk. And they just wander around. <laughs> so, like, with, with cars, you can, you know, get into terrible accidents, right? But animals, they will just do what they want to do, lah. <laughs> while, you're, while you're asleep. <laughs> right, so Sayyidina Mu'az, now he saw an opportunity. Right, so he saw also some attentive to, his, to him. And he realized he was alone in his company. Right, so now it's an opportunity to get, to gain from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right, so you don't, you don't, it's not like every day he gets to be alone with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and ask whatever he wants to ask. So he took full advantage of this uh, opportunity and he said, Ya Rasulullah, permit me to ask you about a matter which has made me sick and ill and caused me to grieve. <laughs> and basically, he's, so, he's thinking about his matter so much and so worried about it and that he wants to ask that, he, that, he, that he's feeling very uh, weakened you know, or disturbed by this matter. And Rasulullah said to him, ask me whatever you wish. Right, and mashallah, Sayyidina Mu'az, his question, you know, you would think, what is this question that he has? <laughs> you know, what is bothering Sayyidina Mu'az so much? His question is actually this, he says, Ya Rasulullah, inform me of a deed which will, which will admit me into paradise. Right, tell me how to get to paradise. <laughs> that is his, his biggest concern. Right, I will not ask you about anything else. I just want to know this. Right, tell me what is it. Tell me something that I can do right, that will, they will, they will uh, 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 secure paradise for me. So somebody replied, excellent, 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 you know, bakh, bakh, bakh. Right, so bakh, you know, it is actually like, a, it's, it's, a, it's an exclamation. It's not a word, it's an Arabic exclamation. Right, like, like, like you know, in, in, in our culture, you'll you be like, like, wow, you know, like the, the, the kind of thing, you know, it's, 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 a, it's an exclamation. Right, so you would say, you know, like, jeh, like that kind of thing, you know, like, 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 like well done. Right, it has a meaning of well done, lah, but, you know, but in our culture, you make a sound. But it means well done, <laughs> right? Or it means you know, excellent. Or it means you know, you did you did well, right? But it's it's their way, right? So their way is bah, right? Bah bah bah, right? That means that, that you know, well done, well done. You know, like you you hit it, you know, on the nail. You, you write you ask the correct question, right? So excellent, 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 <laughs> right? Uh, you have asked me about a very serious matter. You have asked me about a very serious matter. You have asked me about a very serious matter, right? So it uh, uh he repeated three times again. Right, and this shows emphasis right, on to Sayyidina Mu'az. Right, what you just asked me, I, I am going to explain to you. So pay attention and memorize what I'm about to say. He says, it's extremely easy for a person who, in whose favor Allah Subhanahu wa has willed good. It's extremely easy for a person in whose favor Allah has willed good. It's extremely easy for a person in whose favor Allah has willed good. Again, he repeated three times. And Sayyidina Mu'az actually narrates that like, the entire time, every single thing he said, he said three times. <laughs> and he goes in the exact same sentence three times. Right, exactly. You know, you, subhanAllah, eh? right? 
But this is how the Sahaba Ali Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam, they, they, they love it. They love that their Islam would say it three times and extend his speech onto them. And like for us now, if people would do this to us, we get very impatient. Why are like, you saying three times and ten times? <laughs> and getting very, like, you know, faster say the answer. <laughs> right? But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like, uh, this is the way of his teaching. And the Sahaba, they have the adab, they have the, the etiquette and the, uh, the mannerism, right? And they have the, uh, the humility. I had to sit there and wait for Rasulullah Sam to tell them. I mean, something that I always tell the children also that whenever you hear me say something and you've heard it before, I don't say, oh, I know already. Uh, That's actually very bad adab. It's actually very, very bad adab. So I always reprimand them, right? And, and, and tell them, you cannot say to me, I know already. Because right? you say to me, I know already, then straight away, you will not learn anything new. Uh, straight away, the doors of learning anything new will be shut on you. Right? And you know, as well, when, I, when, when you watch like all this. Um, like Sira, and Habib Omar will teach a Sira, and you see the big Mashais thing in front. Right? Do you think that they don't know the stories? They know, lah. they hear it so many times, the stories. Right? But you see them every single time, they will be in awe right, of the stories, and that's how they learn more, they, 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 they deepen in their knowledge. Right? So it's not to you like say, like, oh, I know already, I know already, I know already. Right? That kind of, the, the kind of statement is bad etiquette, and it's also, it closes, it closes the door of knowledge right, to a person. So he says here, right? Uh, so he says here, it is. Uh, he, so she repeated each aspect three times. In other words, he repeated it three times to enable him to fully understand and comprehend and memorize. I memorize what he was about to say. Zainab Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So this is one long hadith that really explains like, his method of saying things three times. So Rasulullah Sallam said that you believe in Allah on the last day, you establish the prayer, you worship Allah alone. Without ascribing any partners to him, and you continue with all of this until your death. And Rasul Sayyidina Mu'az, Ya Rasulullah, repeat to me, and he repeated it three times. And now Sayyidina Mu'az, he is experiencing a sweetness in hearing something from Rasul Sayyidina three times. Right, so now he's asking Rasul to say it three times. Right, say it again, say it again. Right, so Rasul said it again. Eh? So what was the thing that he said to Sayyidina Mu'az? I believe in Allah and the last day. Do your prayers, worship Allah alone. Don't ascribe any partners to Him. Right? And you will continue on this till death. Right? This is what will lead you to paradise. So Rasulullah then said, Oh Mu'az, if you wish, I will inform you about the main issue of this religion. That means the, 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 the hate source of this religion. The foundation of this religion, the, the, cul- the culmination of this religion. Mu'az said, May my parents be sacrificed for you, Ya Rasulullah. Please tell me. Rasulullah SAW said, The main issue of this religion is that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. He is one and has no partner. We testify that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Almost finished it. Okay. He is the one and has no partner, and you testify. You testify that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger. The foundation of this religion is the establishment of the prayer, the praying of zakat. The combination of this religion is doing jihad in the cause of Allah. I have been commanded to fight the people and they establish the prayer, pay zakat, testify that is none worthy of worship, but Allah. He is the one, no partner, and that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. If they do all of this, they will certainly help pass the true religion and have safeguarded their lives and their wealth except what is due and their accountability is of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs> alhamdulillah. Okay. So, so you see here that this hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I stopped my car just now. I was getting like this. <laughs> and the kids were all looking all over the place. They were not looking at me. <laughs> can you all hear me? You can hear me? Yeah, I know. So I have not, I have not explained the hadith. <laughs> okay. 
So here you see that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? Sayyidina Mu'az asked this question. He repeats everything three times, right? And then he he informs Sayyidina Mu'az, right, of the source of the religion, right, which is basically the shahada. Right? If you can understand the shahada well, that's why when we explain the shahada, we explain the shahada to the detail of the shahada. We don't just go through the shahada. We explain what exactly it means. Like and then uh, that is the shahada. Then the foundation is the prayer and the zakat. Right, so someone who does not pray and does not give the zakat, he has no foundation in his religion. He must pray and he must give the zakat. Right. And then the last thing here we see, right, is that what is the what is the call what is the uh, culmination of the religion, and that is jihad, which means to strive. To try to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Okay, should we give our ijazah now? I can't, I can't hear myself. I can't hear myself. <laughs> Okay, okay, now I'll give you a jaza. It's getting very noisy. Okay, so then.